अरे चीकू बिडू चीकू सुनना हाँ रोहित भाई बोलो ना क्या हो गया अरे बिडू तेरे को प्रोग्राम मिला क्या साल भर का जो ट्रेनर देते हैं आप लोगों को हाँ रोहित भाई मिल गया आपको नहीं मिला क्या अरे बिडू क्या बात कर रहे ला मैं कैप्टन हूँ टीम का मेरे को नहीं देंगे क्या तेरे लिए पूछ रहे ला मैं अरे रोहित भाई आपको तो पता है ना सबसे पहले जाके मैं ही लेता हूँ आपको पता है ना आई एम फिटनेस फ्रीक अरे चीकू जा भाई तू जी अपनी जिंदगी ज्यादा दुखती नस पे हाथ मत रखा कर मेरे जा भाई जा What's up guys welcome to another video at Movement Mechanics today we are going to talk about periodization periodization is extremely critical for designing a well structured strength and conditioning program i have designed an annual training program which i am going to share in this video and explain each and every concept of that entire program so that you understand each and every cycle and the structure of the training program and that will help you design a very well periodized strength and conditioning program for athletes and for different sports so let's dive deep inside this topic and understand some movement mechanics before we begin understanding the annual training program we need to understand what is periodization Periodization is nothing but systematic and sequenced training planning for a particular duration. Periodization is generally uh, made for one year. Hence, there is an annual training program which is made at the start of each and every training cycle. Now, periodization has got three major cycles. One is the micro cycle, the second is the meso cycle, and finally the macro cycle. Now, the micro cycle is the smallest duration cycle and lasts for generally one week. then comes the meso cycle which lasts generally for 4 weeks that is 1 month and combination of all these micro cycles and meso cycles over a period of time forms a macro cycle which is the overall picture of the periodized training program the goal of periodization is to reduce injuries to prevent overtraining to implement progressive overload and to achieve peak as and when necessary So we are going to start understanding this annual training program from the month of November because that is where the off season has started. So all the athletes were in the post season before this month, and now they are returning to their off season. So our first fitness test is going to happen in the month of November. As you can see, it is written as T1. That is your testing number one for the entire macro cycle. So November is going to be our first meso cycle. Remember, each and every month is one meso cycle, and all the meso cycles combined is. a macro cycle and each and every week of each and every month is going to be one micro cycle so the first week of november is our first micro cycle uh, the entire month of november is our meso cycle now moving forward to the strength aspect the goal of this meso cycle is hypertrophy and we want accumulation of muscular hypertrophy in this meso cycle so we are going to have higher volumes and lower intensity so the intensity is going to be 65% to 85 80% of their max rm we our uh, focus should be 80% hypertrophy 10% strength and 10% power of the entire training load and training intensities moving down as you can see there is something called a speed and acceleration at the left side of the uh, page so if you can see down there on to the right side coming back on to the right side it is 60% mss 40% acceleration and 10 to 35 meter so what does this mean is we are going to target 60% of mss which is maximal sprinting speed from the conditioning aspect 10% of acceleration work and the total distance of both acceleration and mss combined is going to be only 10 to 35 meters so whatever acceleration work you are going to do is going to be from 10 to 20 meters or 25 meters and whatever maximal sprinting speed work you are going to do going to be doing is going to be not more than 35 meters so that the, that is how you are going to control the volume of speed and acceleration work so what about the changes of direction so changes of direction is going to be on the lighter side we don't want specific training in this uh, particular phase we are, our goal is to accumulate uh, more and more muscle mass i fibrillar hypertrophy or sarcoplasmic hypertrophy depending upon the sport if you want uh, to know about this make sure you are watching the video which is mentioned in the card above we have i have got a specific video on my fibrillar and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy Uh, so what about strength power plyometrics and conditioning so strength is going to be lighter power is going to be lighter plyos is going to be lighter again but conditioning is going to be on the higher side again this is the phase where you are going to build the pace for all the phases to come in the uh, in in the next uh, in the next meso cycles 
So what is going to do the peaking index? So the athlete doesn't need to peak at this time because there are no competitions going on. So the peaking index is going to be on the lower side, of course. So it is going to be roughly around one to two. I have given a peaking index of two over here because that is that is sufficient for the athlete in this meso cycle. So the phase which you are looking for will last for two meso cycles. That means two months, November and December. Moving forward to the next two meso cycles, January and February, we are first undergoing our second fitness test in the month of January because we have uh, done training for two months and now we need to see the results again and compare the results. So we are undergoing the second fitness test in the month of January. Again, the goal of this meso cycle has changed from only hypertrophy to hypertrophy plus max strength. We are going to give certain amount of emphasis in this two meso cycles on max strength as well. Hence, the training phase has changed from 60-80% hypertrophy to 60% hypertrophy with an increment in the strength percentile as well to 30% from 10%. Power still remains the same. On the other hand, uh, uh, intensity is going to increase from 65 to 80% to 70 to 80% of percentile of 1RM. And the ac speed and acceleration is going to, st uh, going to stay the same because there is no need to increase speed and acceleration because you are still not going to do sports specific training immediately because there is no competition in the nearby future. COD again changing from light to moderate, uh, strength is going to change from light to moderate, power is going to be still light, the plyometrics are going to be again light because there is no need of elastic strength right now but conditioning is going to be lowering from heavy to moderate, you are not going to start doing uh, endurance runs now because that time has gone, you are now prepping yourself for the pre-season which is where the uh, sports specific training is coming into the picture. The hypertrophy part is going to start declining and strength and power part is, start going, uh, is going to take over with uh, lots of conditioning, sports specific conditioning coming into the picture. So the peaking index for January and February is going to be 2 and 3 respectively because we want the athlete to start going towards their peak from the month of February because they are undergoing uh, transition first transition period and the pre-season period is going to start from March and April hence we need to start getting close to the peak so that the athlete is able to compete at a very good level now comes the first transition period this is where you transition yourself from the off season to the pre-season hence the transition period is very critical at this time you are going to taper down and transition yourself from high volume low intensity workout to low volume high intensity workout because this is where your pre-season is coming into the picture and this is where competitions are coming into the picture as you can see that there was nothing in the competition block for january february and november december but there is something just light amount of competitions are going to start in the month of april hence we are getting ready for those light amount of competitions now the third testing is going to happen in the month of march because now we have changed now we need to change the training regimen we need to training change the training programs uh, according to the sport hence we need to test your abilities once again uh, so the training phase is going to change uh, from hypertrophy orientation to strength orientation and power orientation as you can see the training block is going to be max strength plus power the percentile of 1rm is going to be increased as well that means the intensity is going to increase from 75 percent to 85 percent of your max uh, rm in terms of speed and acceleration, we are going to shift from 60% of maximum sprinting speed to only 10% of maximum sprinting speed and 80 to 90% of acceleration work because acceleration is extremely critical for team sports. In terms of uh, changes of direction, we are going to go uh, start going heavy on changes of direction because we need more agility and changes of direction work because competitions are coming and hence in competition you need cognitive ability and your body needs to get adapted to quick changes of direction as well. Strength is going to get increased, your power is going to get increased from light to moderate, plyometric activities are also going to get increased as power is increasing, plyometric activities are also going to increase, conditioning becomes light aerobic conditioning becomes light anaerobic conditioning is going to be on the higher side because in terms of anaerobic conditioning what we are going to do is speed and acceleration work the peaking index is going to be four for both of the months which is march and april first two weeks of the month of march you are going to transition yourself from the off season to the pre-season and then you are going to start your pre-season period which is going to last till the month of june so these uh, months are going to be very critical for athletes 
so that they can prep themselves uh, perfectly for the competition period so the next pre-season period will embark on may and june and we are going to undergo our fourth fitness test in the month of may so the intensities are going to be higher the volume is going to decline so we are going to focus more on power now and less on strength because that this is a time where you need a power plyometrics and not max strength that much hence we are going to reduce the load on max strength uh, to only 40 percent and increase the load on power to 50 percent hypertrophy stays the same which is only 10 percent so the training intensity is going to increase from 75 percent to 85 percent to 75 percent to 90 percent of your one rm and the training block is going to be again the same max strength and power but the more emphasis should be given to on power only in terms of speed and acceleration it is going to stay the same uh, 80 to 90 percent of acceleration and 10 percent of mss work which is maximal sprinting speed uh, changes of direction is going to be light in the uh, first half which is in the may but heavy into the second half which is going to be june because in the first half we are going to we are still going to be in the max strength phase but in the second half which is june we are going to be into the power phase which is much more specific towards training hence uh, changes of direction has to be moderate or lighter in the first half and then heavy into the second half which is going to be in the june meso cycle strength going to be moderate power is going to increase to heavy that means higher amount of power plyometrics is also going to be heavy which is higher amount uh, in terms of intensities and in not in terms of volume conditioning is going to be get moderate because now you also need aerobic conditioning hence we need to keep conditioning at a moderate level not too low not too high and the peaking index is going to be seven to eight this is where the athlete is really coming closer to his or her peak so that he can perform best in his or her competitions so now we have moved from our pre-season to our in-season which is the competition period so it's high time competition as you can see the competition blocks are getting darker and darker uh, for july august september because that is where the highest amount of competitions and the most critical competitions are going to come we are undergoing our fifth test in the month of july so that we understand the athletic abilities of all the athletes and make them in the peakest form for the competition so the intensities are going to stay the same 75 to 90 percent and uh, the training phase is going to shift it from uh, max strength and power to only power now we are going to focus 60% on power and only 30% and 10% of strength and hypertrophy respectively uh, so the training block is going to be only power in terms of uh, speed and acceleration speed and acceleration is going to stay the same 80 to 90% acceleration and 10% MSS COD is going to be light to moderate, we don't want excess amount of CODs because they are already doing uh, changes of direction in the competition so we don't want to pile up the volume and create the injury by giving more and more changes of direction and agility work in our training programs. Strength is going to be heavy, power is going to be heavy, plyometrics is going to be heavy as well and conditioning is going to be light to moderate in terms of aerobic conditioning and the peaking index is going to be the highest for this three months which is July, August, September, it is going to be 9 to 10. We want our athletes to be peaked for these three months so that they can perform at the uh, best level in the competitions. Finally, we have got the second transition period or the post-season period in the month of October. This is where the athletes do not have any training, any competition. This is the period when they just refresh and recover from the entire training period. The, the testing which I have given which is the T6 is optional for uh, certain conditioning coaches. I like to test the athletes before they go for their post season but if you don't want to test, uh, for, test the athletes before the post season it is okay that is just an optional test which I personally do. I hope you have understood the entire concept of periodization and annual training programs. You have understood the concepts such as microcycles, mesocycles and macrocycles. This uh, cycles help you prevent injuries, prevent overtraining and implement progressive overload and vary the intensities and volume depending upon the seasonal status and the training phases of athletes. I know this has been a very long video so thank you for watching the video till the very end. If you have liked this video make sure to hit the like and the subscribe button as well as the notification bell icon so that you never miss a video whenever I am uploading a new one. If you have got any doubts or any comments regarding this video make sure you drop them in the comment section. I will be more than happy to answer them and clear your doubts. Alright guys, thank you for watching the video. See you in the next one.